tubular. It's Virus CTV. Today I'm going to do an installation for you so you can follow along if you want. It's for a Game Boy Color drop-in backlit display from Vetro Gaming. So today is the actual install of the drop-in LCD backlight kit from Vetro Gaming. This is for the Game Boy Color. Got my Game Boy Color here. Got it EverDrive, of course, to uh, test it out with. This thing completely works. I've already cleaned it. Everything's fine. I love it. Um, I even had went ahead and bought, let me wipe that off, the glass lens for the Q5 Extra Large screen. However, I ended up getting this. It is not the, I believe it's standard size screen, it's not the Q5, which is fine. There's no issue with that. I just want to play a backlight on here and I think everybody else does too and some of us uh, want to conserve battery, so why not have a smaller screen in order to do so? That's one of the pros. Um, this kit came with two screwdrivers, it came with a standard Phillips, and it came with a tri-wing or Y-tip screwdriver. I have what I need already, so I'm going to save these for a time when I don't have what I need handy, because the only thing that's the downside of these is that the tips are kind of soft, and if you run into a stripped screw, you also run into a broken screwdriver, and that's very real. So let's talk our way through what this kit comes with. It has a glass lens, hence why I need to replace the other one, but also the border is different. Underneath this, it does indeed say Game Boy Color, so no worries there. It's not just plain black. It has an insulating film for the back of the PCB board. It's just a clear piece of plastic to keep things from shorting out. Uh, also, this is an insulating film to go on the back of the LCD screen. We have two different thicknesses of shims. These help us align the screen. We have, of course, the screen itself, and there is a film over it, uh, which you can peel off. I'm going to leave that on for the time being. Keep it clean. And then, of course, this will convert the signal, and it will allow this to understand that unlike the old screen. I'm going to keep my previous screen of course as well as this. So this lens I'm going to take off with a hair dryer to break up the adhesive a little bit and maybe even a suction cup uh, to pull it back. I'm going to do that off camera of course. Everybody else with a plastic lens whether it's the Reginald OEM lens or uh, or, you know, third-party plastic one, you'll be able to do the rocking thing that you've seen so many times where you rock it back and forth like you're trying to break open an ice cube tray. Uh, for the time being, we're just going to disassemble this and get all the way down to the lens like you would for any disassembly. Just because it's glass doesn't mean anything. I can do it when we get to that point. So, let's zoom in. Let's dig in. I'm going to, of course, get these little fellas out of the way. And I'm cutting this part into the video because I forgot to mention this earlier. This is just an adhesive thing. I believe it helps keep the screen lens in. So that's what that is. All right. So let us disassemble this. I'm going to, of course, take the batteries out first as any good boy would. Cool. And now, one, two, three, four, five. There is technically supposed to be a sixth screw. I'm just now realizing that this one doesn't have that, but you would take out that screw, of course. Um, and they're all just your Y screws. So let's go ahead and set this aside. And at this time, I just decided to go ahead and 
Let's put these insulating films on because I don't want anything to get crazy. Put this one on the back of the PCV board. You dig? Cool. Back of PCV. And yeah, it's gonna have some text on it, but honestly, it's smarter that way. Perfect. Wow. Attach this insulating film to the surface of the back of the LCD. I'm gonna be crazy and wild to put this on here upside down because I'm left-handed and I don't wanna to try to rotate this while I'm holding this thing. Nice. Okay. So going back to this, we have one, two, three Phillips screws. One on the left, one in the center, one on the right. Um, before taking that off though, I'm going to pull this little switch off of the actual, it's the on and off toggle. And I'm going to just go ahead and do this. You have here the ribbon cable and you have two little locks. This one's kind of already shimmed up. I'm just going to push them up. They come up to about there. As you can see, it's like a quarter of an inch at most. And then this part, I'm just putting a little bit of pressure. There's a few different ways to do this, but this is the only way I've ever seen to do it. Just the smallest bit of pressure from underneath. There we go, and it comes up. Now, let us take the time to take out those three screws. Perfect, so this part should just lift right up and out of there. Beautiful, okay. So now we can just set all these little bits and bobs aside. Now I just have to take the lens off of this thing I forgot about that one piece. Don't forget to take the little IR sensor out. No big deal though. Okay, so you should be able to just rock this thing a little bit, just enough for the screen anyhow. Oh, wow, okay. <laughs> Mine came up and out, beautiful. So yeah, it's just not quite as tacky as it used to be. And I think that's exactly what this guy is. I just do it the way that the other ones are done with glass. And hopefully it doesn't chatter. Let's do an experiment together, shall we? Bam. Cool, okay, that's brilliant. Okay, we are now at the, the base of this thing. It's already clean, if yours wasn't, now would be the perfect time to do that. Okie dokie. Now, one thing I wanna point out here is that the kit came with a thing stating, check the screen works before you do this. So, step numero uno, handle with care. Do not put pressure on this, oh gosh. You mean like I just did with the other one? So, now, you peel that away and what it did was left a little opening. So we do that. Beautiful, beautiful. This guy is going square into this. Yummy. 
Hold on, let me, uh... Should we have peeled the plastic beforehand? Oh, now we can come off. Gorgeous! They added the word light because this is a backlit thing. Beautiful, beautiful. Okay. I'm loving the way this is going. Well, the whole thing is sticky. There's a little inlaid ledge where it dips up. Guess what's going in that? The very top of this is going to help you center that. Yeah, baby. Now gently get your fingers out of there by using your other finger to push it down. I'm just gonna go around. Now again, I did have adhesive there from the previous thing, but why not make it a little bit stronger, a little bit more reinforced, or you could even pull off the old one and just put this new one on. Okay. Now it's just a matter of successfully getting the wax paper off of there. All right. Now I need to take that off and we have to go ahead and wedge these two shims into place, okay? They have adhesive on them to keep them in place. So I'm going to just gently place these here and see if those yield any results, like the big one on the left and the small one on the right. And just look at it from the front and see what I see. I mean, it looks pretty good to me. So what I did was I pushed the screen, the LCD, all the way up to the top. And then I put the fat shim on the left and the skinny shim on the right. Um, and that still gives enough room for this to bend because if the screen was lower, first of all, it wouldn't align at the top. But second of all, this wouldn't have any room to bend and it would be pinched. It would be, it would be totally pinched. Now we can test this out because now I'm, I'm far enough along that I'm okay with this. So moving this there, this there, we're gonna go ahead and Push this guy forward, these little white stripes face up, and then you just close this forward. Okay. Let me show you closer now that I've done it. This is folded upward, so there's space behind the screen, and these little white stripes right there above my thumbnail go into this. And then this little orange flap right here above my pointer finger now folds to the right, like that. Now we're flipping this over so that this, where it has the insulation, can touch the back of this and not cause any problems. So I'm just going to go ahead and fold it forward. These little lock tabs are already popped up, or at least they were. Go ahead and make sure that they are still. There we go. You can feel them move. Because these little contacts face upward and they go above the plastic bar that's so that when you push the tabs back down they apply pressure to the ribbon cable nice and we're not gonna put this all the way back together because we don't need to we just need to put the battery cover over it to the point where they are available to touch the battery And moment of truth. There we go. Had to cut for a second because I couldn't find where the power switch was. I was like, what the? Yep, it works beautifully. So now we can just finish putting it together the rest of the way. You might be wondering what this little, little tail is right here. Uh, it's the, the sensor for changing the light brightness.
So, I'll be right back. I think I wanna just use some Kapton tape to keep this in place because I don't want any pinched anything. And um, I'm not even certain that that's in the actual instructions, but why not keep this down just a little bit um, so that there's not as much push down, like it's already held down. All right, well, I'm still uh, unpacking stuff, so I cannot find my capped on tape. But, you know, electrical tape will hold just fine and say how thick it is. Um, but it is designed for this sort of thing, so. I'm doing that. You do not necessarily have to, but might not be safe. Okay. So, now we are going to inset the IR. It should just... Do something beautiful. Like lay into this thing. It seems that the better idea is to just put the IR in first. Clearly, single-handedly, the hardest thing I've done all day. The other way. Okay, so the next step is to put your IR receiver back in because we need to work on getting the sensor in place. I'm not entirely certain if you can see. There's two. There's like an opening. Um, you want the opening to face up. And the idea there is that this thing can slide into that opening and be seated in it and never move again. Not gonna be one of those things I could show you very easily. Hot dog, there we go, okay, okay. And in that same vein, just to keep that placed, this keeps popping up and I don't want it to, so I'm gonna just put another little piece of electrical tape there just to hold it. So, let us go ahead and put it back together now. Da -da -da -dee, da -da -da -dee. and Game Boy Color is sure a hell of a lot easier to put together and take apart for that matter than Game Gears are. This is just, if this was some kind of Game Gear mod, it'd be straight chaos. Okay, and for those wondering about the existing IR receivers, uh, the IR blaster LEDs, they, they're in there just fine. They don't, they're not interrupted by the little sliver of that sensor, so no worries there. You don't have to do anything crazy. Okay, and now, finally, the speaker goes in. Beautiful. And we're gonna go ahead and, one last time, Okay, so I'm just gonna quickly put the power switch back in place. Cool, beautiful. And I'm gonna slide this in, as we just talked about, where it goes over the top of the, flat, the black plastic bar. And then you pinch little plastic tabs down. Beautiful. I'm going to quickly make sure it still works because um, before I put in the screws, I would hate to put it all together right from this point anyway and have to take out five screws again. So let's give this the test real quick before I put it all together. Oh, 
hot dog. And hell, while we're at it, nice. Okay, so now I'm just gonna go ahead and put in those three screws again. All right, now this back piece goes right on and then we put in these six guys. Brilliant. All right, well, many thanks to Vetro Gaming for sending this over for review. It was really cool of you, and definitely I intend on seeing if there's anything else that they want me to share. If you don't want to do any of this yourself, you can buy pre-made kits from them. It's great. There's other products on there too, so I'll have both the um, no-cut drop-in LCD Game Boy Color kit that I have here listed below, but also the website. Thanks for watching, you guys. Have a good day. Thanks for tuning in. Check the description for all my socials, bruh.